This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Interim results announced this morning by Aquis listed Cook's Coffee Company with a return to profitability from its 83 stores in the UK and Ireland, plus a few international stores. Well, joining us today is the CEO, Aidan Keegan. Thank you very much for joining us, Aidan. How are you doing? Very good, Mark. Thank you. And thank you for having me. It's always good to be catching up. So I'm reading for the report this morning. You say the directors believe that the company has turned a corner, which is evidenced by its return to profitability. So first of all, I mean, what do you think has driven this uh, profitability that you're reporting now? Uh, I think, Mark, to be fair, we've been on this track for a while. You know, there's a sort of um, within our industry in particular, there's been a serious sort of COVID hangover. Uh, and we've been growing towards this point over the last number of years. It's it's great to finally, you know, get over that line. Um, but I, I think to be fair, you know, our people at the coalface, our franchisees, our regional developers, uh, and and our, and our team in the teams in the UK and Ireland have, have really driven this on over the last uh, year to 18 months and, and to get us to this point. Okay, okay. And I did notice as well that you talked about two shores, one at Horsham and Dorking, which have been renovated and sales showing uh, gains in excess of 50% in each store for the first three months of opening post those renovations compared to previous year sales. I mean, do you think sort of renovating stores has made them more attractive? Is this something you might be replicating across other stores? Yeah, we're we're at, we're actually we're due to open another three stores uh, before the end of the calendar year, and one of them will be a refurb store as well. So I, I think where it's possible to retrofit in, you know, new product and so on and so forth, it's it's very much worthwhile. Which is borne out by those figures, as you say, fifty percent year on year growth um, over, you know, as I say, where it's physically possible, we'll look to do it in conjunction with our franchisees. And um, yeah, we you know, there, we're very, it, those two stores in particular bearing the fruits of that labor. Okay, good. Well, you mentioned there that a lot of the profitability is sort of coming out of the post-COVID uh, hangover here. But of course, the, the figures in the UK up 39.4% and in Ireland store sales up just under 18%. And you say you expect that the financial performance in the second half will deliver another profit broadly similar to what's been achieved in the first half. So you're sort of feeling pretty confident now that you've returned to profitability to not only keep that profitability, but increase it over the course of yeah subsequent financial reports. Well, yeah, I, I would certainly hope to, and, and touch wood, we will. I mean, those figures you're quoting are actually the seven weeks post event, you know, since since the end of September, uh, which uh, you know are are stronger than the results into that six months. So, yeah, I, I would certainly hope that uh, that we can drive it on. Like I say, we've got new store openings coming as well. Uh, we we should open another eight um, before the end of the financial year, uh, three by Christmas, as I say. Um, so absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, we're we're pretty bullish. We've got we've still got a very strong pipeline and more people putting their hands up every day. Okay, so another eight stores added by the end of the financial year. So that would be March twenty twenty five. Yeah, for you. Okay, and as I remember, it's about twenty thousand pounds profit per store uh, per annum uh, for Cooks Coffee. Yeah, exactly. So each store would contribute in its first full year of trading uh, about about 20,000 to our top line um, because of the, the makeup of our company then as well in terms of the, the franchise, um, the franchise operation and the regional development operation. We we need to add very little cost to, to uh, you know, as as that ramps up. So in it, in the first full year of operation, that's what that's what it, it yields to us. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Indeed, so in theory, indeed. and your chairman sort of statement as well, mentioning towards the end there that the target is to reach three hundred stores in the UK and Ireland within ten years. And I think you only have about zero point three percent of the UK market here. The target was to get to zero point five. So just on the broader strategy, then, what are you talking here? What's the sort of overall real plan? I mean, three hundred in ten years, you can probably do better than that. I would say. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> You may say so. I couldn't possibly comment, Mark, but but certainly we 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 will be we are and will be ambitious around those numbers, um, and we'd also look to push uh, push sales figures, which will also push our yield from those stores as well. I, I think that three hundred is eminently achievable over that over that time period. Um, 
particularly knowing what we have in the pipeline coming up in, in the short to medium term. So yeah, I, I would say eminently, eminently achievable. Yeah. Um, okay. I think okay. in with regard to your point around our share of the market, I, I mean, you know, the numbers don't lie. However, we're not we're not trying to compete necessarily in central business districts and so on and so forth. We have targeted markets that have had a good yield for us, uh, generally suburban units, um, new domestic uh, you know, residence sort of developments uh, with with um, with short malls or, or um, shopping, little shopping centers and so on, which have been pretty good to us. Um, so we're not, we're, yeah, as I say, Property wise, we're not necessarily competing with the big guys, uh, but what we have, we like, and it's working for us. Okay, and you mentioned there about sort of having low overheads there. So, as a franchise model, which is of course what you are, how do you would you say you sort of stack up against other franchise models in terms of your your model and your plans just to really continue take um, opening new stores? Yeah, well, well, I think the benefit for the the benefit the benefit from uh to us for the unique way that we operate a franchise business is that we don't have to scale up as the stores scale up you know the the regional developers have their cut of the cake we have our cut of the cake um but as i said we don't need to scale up and put body you know, boots on the ground in for example you know we're looking for people in scotland or northern ireland it it, it won't be us putting boots on the ground it will be our our partners with um in, in those businesses um, so to that end, uh, where where our top line increases, or there isn't a scalable increase in bottom line that goes with it. You know, we could, we we may need to add cost here and there, but it's a lot at a lot lower level. Um, so that should yeah. increase, you know, relative pro uh, profitability. Okay, an overall strategy for the business and and for shareholders, Aidan, what would you say is uh, the all well, the investment case really, and uh, what you plan to to build? Well, well, I think over those 10 years, if you take it, we're going from, you know, at the potentially at the end of this financial year from 90 to, um, you know, uh, add roughly 20 stores per annum as we go forward uh, without adding uh, a great deal of cost um, with that. I, I think, you know, we're probably a little undervalued at the moment. And I think if you look at uh, if you do the maths and look at what that yields in the long run in terms of profitability, you know, we've published EBITDA and profitable numbers. Um, you know, and you take whatever multiple you use to put a value on our future. Um, I think, you know, one could argue that, uh, that now is the time to act, perhaps. Right. OK, well, thank you very much for your time. Aidan Keegan, the CEO of Cook's Coffee. Mark, thanks a million. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.